time to open our services prayer this evening. Let's stand and go to the Lord and ask His will be done and that Jesus be lifted up here this evening. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time we have to come before you this evening. Thank God everybody that's come before you, John, everybody that's watching online. God, I pray that you have your way here tonight, God. The Holy Ghost have His way, God. I pray that you anoint the pastor, God, you anoint the singers, Lord, that everything be done decently in order that Jesus be lifted up. They said He'd draw all men up. be back in God's house again this evening. It's good to have Brother Bell with us tonight. Uh, Brother Shelton mentioned earlier how God had blessed me over the past five years. I can testify that Romans 8 and 32 is true. It says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You know, that's the love of God. If there's anything that we're needing, he's not going to hold it back from us. So anything that you're needing from the Lord, you can have it here this evening if you're just believing for it. Uh, okay, we're going to have a change in order of service this evening. We're going to have two choir songs, but first we're going to receive our offering for our ushers to come and get Brother Eddie and uh, get Brother Charlie help with that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Brother Charlie, we ask the Lord bless time of giving. Thank you, Lord. Once again, this time the choir is going to come minister in a song.
the Lord in prayer at this time. Uh, get Brother Eddie to come on. We'll have him help lead us in prayer. Uh, we're going to anoint Sister Sharon and pray for her. Uh, she's having problems with her voice. Uh, continue to pray for Let's remember Sister Angela. Uh, let's pray for uh, Sister Mama and Brother Sister Ball. Uh, the Lord's touching these, and I believe we're going to see them completely healed. Uh, Brother Ball said he doesn't need that walker all, or that cane all the time. We're going to see that he doesn't need it any time, any time at all. Um, let's remember Sister Sarah's children she makes requests for. Let's uh, remember Brother Patrick. Remember Brother Willard and Brother Shortridge. Lord, help these ministers. Uh, remember Sister Darlene's husband Lawson. He'd be saved and be healed. Uh, remember backsliders that we lost from our church. Let's remember uh, Harper and Haley. Let's remember uh, Sister Ball. Uh, gave a request for her grandson Joshua. Pray, the Lord, touch him. He's having seizures. The Lord can heal that. And Sister Anna has several unspoken requests. Pray, the Lord, help her with that. Does anybody else have any spoken requests? Pray for Brother Tim Dean, their service tonight. All right, Brother Dean. Pray God give him traveling grace coming home tonight. No others, a sister. No others that stand and get Sister Sharon to come up and have her morning. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. How many God's ever touched you and healed you? Amen. Amen. He hasn't changed. Amen. Amen. Let's pray God to help and heal her body tonight. Touch her voice. Yes. This time the choir is going to minister in song again.
thank God for freedom. As the son says, it's free, it's free indeed. You're not just partially free. He didn't loosen the chains. He broke them completely off of you. And, and Jesus, you're free indeed. And this time I'm going to hand so so to Pastor Brother Shelton. <laughs> Amen. Give God a hand of praise tonight if you're free. If you're not free, you can be before this service is over. Jesus has the power <clears throat> to liberate us. <clears throat> the Bible says if he makes us free, we're truly free. Free indeed. That means I don't have to doubt it. I don't have to question it. I don't have to wonder about it. If he says I'm free, then I'm free. Faith takes hold of that. Amen. Amen. And I walk in the liberty that Christ said that I have. Can you say praise the Lord? I want all the musicians, whether well, or not I hear yet. Sister Albright, just hold on. We'll do that in just a minute. How many here has had a wonderful day in the Lord? <clears throat> Aren't you glad for the love of God? Amen. The Lord's been so good to every one of us, and we're just thankful. I told you recently, I preached uh, that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Amen. I'm not talking about material things. Those things are going to burn up, going to pass away. We're blessed with the blessings that this world knows nothing about. We're blessed with joy. We're blessed with peace. We're blessed with hope. Amen. This old world's not our home. I'm glad all that's found in Christ. Everything you need is found in Jesus Christ. I tell you, friend, he'll never, he'll never not satisfy the longing and hunger of your soul. Can you say praise the Lord? All right, there they come. <clears throat> Musicians, stand, please. Josiah, just stay standing. <clears throat> Where's Anna? Amen. She may have left and went down the road to go to church. <laughs> Let's give them a hand. They're faithful week in and week out. <clears throat> Appreciate them. They, they are here week in and week out playing music, and there comes Anna Grace. And uh, I appreciate their faithfulness, their commitment to be here. Uh, they do it because they love God. Amen. They're not trying to, you know, be in the spotlight, not trying to, uh, you know, receive accolades, but I'm glad they do it because they have a heart for the Lord. And uh, it shows there's a difference when it's entertainment. There's a difference when it's done for that individual than when it's done for the glory of God. <clears throat> and he'll share his glory with nobody. Amen. Good to have Brother Junior Bell with us tonight. Love him. Appreciate him. Amen. Brother Bell, good to see you. I love you and appreciate you being here. All love you in the house of God. Let's get in the word of God. Amos chapter 6 tonight. <clears throat> you do pray for our voice. <clears throat> God will help us. Amen. I think if I'd have been a Methodist preacher, I wouldn't have had this problem with my voice. But I'm glad I'm a Pentecostal preacher. Amen. Amen. And I want to preach and spend to be spent for the gospel's sake. Amos chapter 6, <clears throat> verse 1 to 9. Have you enjoyed the good service this morning? Amen. Enjoyed the liberty in this house told Sister Shelton this week, I looked over to church, uh, you know, looked at the service they had online and just kind of watched the singing part of it. And uh, it was a church that was not a conservative church. It was a very liberal church. And uh, I told her, I said, what I observed was, was folks on their feet worshiping, folks with their hands raised. I didn't hear anybody. I listened. I didn't hear anybody that was up there singing. I didn't hear anybody trying to admonish them or trying to encourage them or to push them to worship the Lord. Those folks just did that. And I said, we're a conservative church. We're a wholeness church. Ain't no, we are a wholeness church. Amen. We're saved. We're on our way to heaven. And it ought to be easy to worship him in his house. Amen. <clears throat> Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises at midnight. They were praying and singing praises at midnight. So it ought not to be too hard tonight or any time we gather in this house to worship the Lord of glory. Amen. He's worthy. Amos 6 and 1. Let's pray. Father, thank you <clears throat> again tonight. Come on, saints. Help us pray tonight. <clears throat> God, we're honored. <clears throat> we're honored again <clears throat> to be in your house, Lord. Thank you for the service this morning, the wonderful spirit, the presence of God. And Lord, now we're gathered here again tonight. <clears throat> we need your touch. We stand behind this sacred desk, Lord. Touch our voice tonight. Father, I pray, God, that you'll let me not say anything more than what you'd have me to say. That we'd preach the word of God tonight. I want to preach what I believe you've impressed upon my heart this week. In time of studying and praying and fasting and seeking your face, God. 
We pray for those that are not here, Lord. I look out and see so many that's not in this house tonight, God. You know where they are. We pray for those that are sick, those that are traveling, God. Keep all of them safe, God. Heal those that are sick now. We thank you for each one that's come out this way. This is a wonderful group of people, God. I'm among people that love you, Lord, that serve you. I pray, God, we'll keep on the fire in line. We'll stay the course, Lord. We'll continue to serve you day by day, dear God. Thank you for touching Sister Sharon tonight. We believe in the healing power of God. We believe in laying on the hands of sick, uh, and they shall recover. Amen. And we're believing she's going to recover in the name of Jesus. Uh, God, help us tonight. Now, I need your help, Lord. I stand here humbly as your servant, God. Just dust. Uh, lay your hand on us, God. Let it be preaching with ease tonight. Let it be effective, God. Uh, let the Spirit and the Word do the work in our hearts tonight. Touch those that are in this congregation, those that are watching online. And we'll praise you. We'll love you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Everybody said amen. amen. Amos chapter 6, verse 1. Amos said, we're going to just pull from the first part of this verse. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. <clears throat> Trust in the mountain of Samaria which are named chief of the nations to whom the house of Israel came. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Can you shout amen tonight? Give God one more hand of praise as you're seated this evening. <clears throat> praise the Lord. He's worthy, amen. He's worthy of our praise. I want to preach to you tonight for just a little while on this thought of caution to careless living, a caution to careless living. I believe that you'll agree with me tonight that this generation today is living in a spiritual stupor. I believe this generation is not fully aware of the times that we're living in right now. <clears throat> I was on my way to church <clears throat> this morning. I say this often, but it's true. I saw folks on the golf course getting ready to play a round of golf. And I said, you, you, you have no thought of what's coming on this earth. You have no thought of what's coming in days ahead. I was coming out the evening and coming to church, and I saw uh, parents out there with their kids on, you know, teaching them golf or on one of the greens out there. And I, I thought, you have no thought, no idea. We're in a spiritual stupor. You have no clue about what's coming and the seriousness of these times. <clears throat> the Bible said, this was the condition that prevailed in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. In that day, the Bible said uh, there was a, a fullness of bread. They didn't lack for anything there in Sodom and Gomorrah. There was an abundance of idleness. And because of that condition, it eventually led to more and more wickedness and ungodliness. We read back and we find out that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because of the very thing that's taking place in this nation today. The very thing that they promoted, the very thing that they celebrated, uh, God destroyed them over. Hey Amen. They perished. They were destroyed. This was the condition that prevailed in the days of Noah. The Bible said of that generation that their hearts were continually evil and that they were marrying and given in marriage. Uh, you know, no thought of the coming flood. They could not claim ignorance because Noah was a preacher of righteousness. And Noah preached a message of warning that judgment's going to come, that God's going to destroy all of this and all of those not on board this ship. But the Bible said they continued on daily, day by day, with no thought, no concern of the coming judgment uh, upon them and upon their families uh, and upon their children. They continued until the judgment came, and they all perished in their sins except for those eight souls on board that ark. We look around this world today. We look around this nation. I can stay right inside the United States of America, and it seems as though that the wickedness is growing, not day by day, not hour by hour, but minute by minute. 
there was a growing wickedness and ungodliness and carelessness in this world today. We see it in the accounts of war and bloodshed and murders. Murders a common thing that happens each and every day. There are disasters taking place around this world. We are in a crisis hour. We stand on the brink of the judgment of God. Matter of fact, I believe some of what's taking place in this nation right now is the judgment of God upon us because of our sins and our wickedness. And we're facing the wrath of a holy God because of our sins in this nation. And yet it seems as though this generation is unmoved by the message. It seems as though this generation is at such ease. Uh, they have become so calloused uh, and so unmoved by the conditions of this time. They seem to be eating and drinking, uh, marrying and giving in marriage uh, with no concern, no care of what's coming uh, in the days of head. I believe that some have even been given over to reprobate minds because they have rejected the truth of the Word of God. We live in a day where men live for pleasures. There are men that will take a person's life just so they can have a momentary pleasure in their flesh. They live for pleasures, and these pleasures have caused us to sacrifice our principles and our standards and our morals. When I was coming up, uh, listen, uh, you know, uh, when I was coming up in school and as a young boy, uh, there were people sinners then just like they are today, uh, but we had morals in that day. Uh, there were still standards in that day. Uh, um, there were still people, even though they were sinners, uh, they still had a fear of God. They respected the church. They feared the word of God. Even though they were not saved, they still had moral values. In this day, men of true convictions and godless standards are few and far between. And this can be attributed to the carelessness of these times, to the ease that's gripped the people of our day. Well, that's looking out there in that world. That's looking at our surroundings, what's taking place. Uh, I believe that describes this day, uh, amen, just as it is. But I believe when we look inwardly at the church, uh, we see the same carelessness uh, and this same ease uh, that has dominated this age uh, has found its way into the church. Church people have become at ease uh, in their relationship with the Lord. Many have fallen asleep in the wake of the coming of the Son of God. Amen. These are dangerous times. That's why we preach often. There is no time now to go to drifting in your relationship with the Lord. There is no time to even look back uh, from where God brought you out of the muck and the mire. It must be, as she taught this morning, uh, we must continue to go forward uh, with the Lord. I'm just telling you, friend, uh, it matters not how we feel. Uh, we've got to pray another prayer, uh, sing another song, uh, fast another meal, uh, teach another lesson, preach uh, another message. Uh, amen. Continue to seek the God of glory. Time's going to run out. I said time is going to run out. Jesus is going to come. I don't want to be caught unaware. I don't want to be somewhere not looking for the coming of the Lord. But as the song says, I want to be somewhere listening for my name. I want to be ready when Jesus comes again. Somebody praise him tonight. Church people have become at ease. People have fallen asleep on the pews. They're not, they're not aware of the dangerous times that we're living in. This ease has produced worldliness. There's always been worldliness as long as there's been godliness since the sin in the Garden of Eden. But we see an elevation of it today. We, we see a speeding up of that worldliness in the church. There's compromise in the church. This ease has produced all of these things. Hey Amen. This carelessness and the ease of these days have caused our church doors to be closed on Sunday nights. 
They've caused our church doors to be closed on Wednesday night. This carelessness and the ease of these days uh, have produced empty pews uh, uh, week in and week out uh, from church to church across the land. Uh, I want to tell you something. I was out this week and went by Lowe's Hardware. Didn't stop, but I just looked because I like that place. I don't remember a time riding by Lowe's Hardware where the parking lot was not full. Didn't matter what time of day it was. It might have been noontime. It might have been the afternoon or the evening, but the parking lot was full. But I guarantee you on any given Sunday of any given week, you can ride by our churches and you'll find empty parking spot after empty parking Parking spot, uh, and then you walk in the sanctuary, uh, and you'll find empty pew after empty pew. Uh, what's causing all this? Uh, where a Christian would rather be, uh, amen, at Lowe's Hardware on a Sunday night uh, than they would in the house of their father. Uh, I'm telling you, there is a carelessness. Uh, people are becoming at ease uh, in their relationship with God. Sister Shelton and I were out preaching. When I was doing the preaching, she had just my sidekick. She's a beautiful sidekick. We were preaching a few weeks ago out of town and coming back home from Raleigh that night. And on the way home, I, I look at churches. And we were coming home. We were on the road while y'all were having church here. And I looked at church after church after church after church. I'm telling you, I only saw one church. It was a Baptist church up toward Ramsour uh, that had their doors open, cars in the parking lot. Every other church I saw, it was numerous. Uh, church after church after church after church, uh, no service on Sunday night. Uh, amen. And I told her, uh, I said, look at all the restaurants open. Uh, every McDonald's was open. Uh, every Walmart, well, come on, nod your pretty heads at me. Uh, every Walmart was open. Uh, every Bojangles we come by, they had their doors open. Uh, but the church had the lights off and the doors locked uh, and the saints of God, so-called Christians, uh, who knows where they were, but let me tell you something, friend, uh, there ain't no time now uh, to have less of it, uh, we need more of the church, uh, we need more of the presence of God, uh, we need more time in the altar, uh, we need more of the preaching uh, of the word of God, Jesus uh, is going to come, uh, and we better wake up uh, and be ready when that day comes. <laughs> Oh God, I do feel the Holy Ghost helping me here tonight. There's a carelessness in this hour. Amen. It ought not to ever be among the people of God. It ought not to ever be among the church. The Christian life is never a life of ease. If you're looking for just some kind of little cotton candy, you know, tiptoeing through the tulips when you serve the Lord, amen, you're not in the right thing. You're, you're, not, you're not in salvation. Salvation is going to be a fight, my friend. I didn't fight before I got saved, Brother Bell, because the devil already had me. But the moment I said I do to Jesus, I, I'm in a warfare now. There's an enemy after your soul and after mine. Peter said in 1 Peter 5 and 8, Be sober and be vigilant for your adversary, the devil. He is your adversary. He is my adversary. Walketh about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. This Christian experience is a fight. It is a conflict. It is a warfare. And there is no place, no time to become at ease or to become careless. I can't just quit praying because I don't feel like praying. I can't just lay out of church because I don't feel like going to church. I can't just lay my Bible down because I just don't feel like reading my Bible. It is a fight. You've got to get that flesh, amen, under subjection and say, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to walk uh, in the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, it is a fight, but it's worth the fight. I said, it is a fight, but it is worth the fight. Uh, and one day, uh, we're going to lay this cross down uh, and trade it in for a crown of glory uh, that will never, ever uh, fade away. Uh, it will be worth it all. Hallelujah to God. down on your mouthpiece as they say in boxing the boxing world 
and you just got to gird up your loins and you got to get some fight up in you and you got to say, I'm going to fight this good fight every day of my life. I'm not going to grow weary in well-doing. Going to get full of the Holy Ghost and stay full of the Holy Ghost. Going to keep my fire burning. Going to stay on fire for the Lord. And I have decided I'm going to follow Jesus. And I'm going to make heaven my eternal home. Cannot become careless. We cannot become at ease. First Timothy 6 and 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Then the apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 26 through 27, he said, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. In other words, I'm not just wasting my time here, but I keep under my body and bring it under subjection lest that by any means, uh, though when I have preached to others, I myself uh, should be a castaway. The Amplified says, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test, be unapproved and rejected as a counterfeit. The Apostle Paul realizes here uh, that he cannot afford to let up. He cannot become at ease, uh, lest he become a castaway lest he become unfit, amen, lest he become unapproved and rejected as a counterfeit, lest everything becomes in vain. He knew the danger of becoming at ease in the Christian life. Paul realized that when a Christian ceases to fight and to make sacrifices for the battle in this spiritual warfare, death, spiritual death will take charge and the end result will be destruction. I don't know how you feel about it, but I got in this thing to finish this thing. I got in this thing to cross the finish line. Hey, man, I've been in a battle just like you are. I fight every day just like you do, like you do, but thank God I'm not in this fight by myself. I'm not in this battle alone. I serve the Lord of glory, the King of kings, and the Lord of all lords. He's the Lord of my salvation. He's the keeper of my soul, and he told me if I'll walk with him he'll walk with me and he said I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved us and thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ somebody go ahead and give him praise in this house tonight ah, blessed God hallelujah who time my mind Ah, God. So keep on fighting, child of God. Don't grow careless in this thing. Don't become at ease in this thing. If you fight, you'll finish. I said if you'll keep fighting, you will finish. We know today that formality and worldliness have come into the church like a flood. But it takes effort. It takes conviction. And it takes power to war against this attack of Satan. The pressure's on in this last hour. Preachers today, I, I can preach about preachers because I'm one of them. Preachers are easing up huh, and becoming careless in this crisis time. Hey man, you'll agree with me tonight. If you've been around church any time at all, uh, you'll agree with me that there are preachers today uh, than things that go on in our churches that they wouldn't let go on years ago. Not your pretty heads at me and say amen, say oh me. I said things that they wouldn't let go on years ago. Today they openly embrace and they celebrate as if it's a victorious thing. Say amen. Amen. They've softened their stance. They've softened the message. They're, they're afraid to offend anybody. This is a generation of cupcakes. You, every little thing you say offends people. You can't correct anybody by the word. 
I'll go home to my mama. I'll just quit the church. But we've got to be made of sterner stuff than this. We've got to be willing to have our hearts touched by the word of God. The flesh lanced by the word of God. Amen. Corrected by the word of God. Amen. Not for our harm or our demise, but to make us stronger in the Lord of glory. I'm glad when I hear a message and it gets on my heart. I thank God God's trying to work on me. God's trying to improve me. God's trying to bring me somewhere in him. I want to know what the word says. If I get out of line, I want it to bring me back in line because I want to make heaven my home. I want to make heaven my home. I want to make heaven my home. Amen. I watched people down through the years. When I first started pastoring, it seemed like people could take more than what they can take today. People start laying out of church. You preach about laying out of church, and they'll just quit church. Rather than getting that right and start going to church, uh, they'll just puff up and get mad in their flesh and just quit church altogether. You didn't hurt the church. You hurt yourself. You preach about sin and not partaking of sin. That old flesh gets offended and people will get mad and run here and yonder, do all those things. Uh, I want to know what the Bible says. And if I'm not in line with that word, I'm going to get in them orders until I get lined up with that word. Then I'm going to leave there with victory in my heart, uh, knowing, thanking God that God loves me enough to care about me. Uh, amen. To try to help keep me in line. Can you say amen? The stance has been softened. The message now has been softened because we don't want to offend anybody. The standards have been lowered. Hey man, we become seeker sensitive. Well, we haven't become seeker sensitive. Uh, hey man, but that's today. That's that's the norm. Uh, that the seeker sensitive church and the seeker friendly church. Uh, I've heard of pastors. Uh, hey man, that would go to their congregations uh, and want to find out what messages they want to hear. Uh, what is it that you don't like to hear? Uh, what is it that you, that you want to hear? Uh, well, you know what that what most people are going to say uh, in their flesh. Uh, we want to hear happy messages. We don't want you to preach against sin. We don't want you to preach about hell. We want to feel good when we leave here. Jimmy Jones said if anybody ever comes to church and, and they leave that service feeling good in their flesh, that the word of God was not preached. I said the word of God was not preached. Amen. I want to hear the word of the Lord. If it gets on my toes, I'm going to change my position in God and I'm going to go on in the grace of God. Now we want to be careful. We don't want to offend nobody. So we reword it. We don't say it the same way. <laughs> Amen. We're seeker sensitive. We want to be real gentle with people today. We want to be real careful with people. That's why you have so many spiritual babies on the pews. Because what we're doing is giving them milk, giving them milk, giving them milk, never giving them any meat of the word. But there comes a time you got to feed that flock the meat of the word, and they got to eat that more that meat of that word, and they're going to grow. They're going to be strong in the Lord. They're going to grow up in God Almighty. I don't lay the blame so much on the pew. I lay the blame on leadership. I lay the blame on the pulpit. Every church that's ever become worldly and compromised, uh, it didn't start on the pew, it started in the pulpit. I said it started in the pulpit. I've got pastor friends that's been appointed in churches, uh, amen, that are not conservative churches, uh, amen. They just inherited that. Uh, they didn't cause that mess. Uh, I've told some of them, listen, uh, that church didn't get that way overnight. You ain't going to bring it back overnight. Uh, you got to love them people and preach the word and lead them, uh, amen. But where you see worldliness, uh, where you see compromise in a church, uh, where it used to not be that way, uh, that fault and blame always lies with that pulpit uh, and with the pastor of that church. Come on and say amen to me tonight. Uh, amen. I want to hear the word of God. Uh, I don't want a cotton candy message. Uh, I don't want somebody to tell me I'm all right. Uh, if I'm not, if I'm on my way to hell, uh, I want them to tell the truth in love uh, and help me get there by the word of God. Amen. 
We don't want to offend anybody. We don't want our numbers to go down. We want our numbers to go up, but God's not counting the heads. God looks at hearts. God counts the hearts. We don't want to offend people. We don't want people to leave our church. Uh, we don't want the numbers to decline or the offerings to decline. So they relax their teachings and their stand against sin. I asked a good pastor friend of mine recently. I said, what do we stand against anymore? What is it that we stand against anymore? I used to know clearly what we stood for and what we stood against. What is it that we stand against any longer? I told him, I said, brother, if this is not worldliness in our churches today, uh, somebody please tell me what worldliness is. If this is not worldliness in front in our churches today, uh, then tell me what worldliness is. Can you say amen? we become at ease in Zion uh, and the Son of God has been wounded uh, in the house of his friends. Where are the convictions today? There used to be a time we don't live by convictions. I understand that alone. We live by the Word of God. But there are convictions. And I'm glad the Word of God will convict our hearts. Where are the convictions today? When I was coming up, come on some of you older Church of God folks. When I was coming up, I remember forever and forever people always standing up and saying, God dealt with me about this. And I laid this down. God dealt with my heart in the altar and I gave that up. God at my home, standing there at my closet, God said, don't dress like that no more. And I didn't dress like that no more. God dealt with their hearts. People were convicted. Amen. Where are those convictions today? You know why you don't hear about conviction much anymore? Because preachers don't preach against hardly anything anymore. Amen. And so the anointing's not there. And when the anointing's not there, there's nothing to destroy the yokes. But thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the Word of God. For where the anointing is... It will break the chains. It will destroy the yokes of bondage. There will be conviction in that church. Sinners will come in and they'll be uneasy and they'll squirm rather than being entertained on a Sunday morning. I'm not preaching, man. I'm anointed. This is a seeker sensitive time. I saw a picture the other day. Can I preach a little bit longer tonight? As long as my voice hold up, I'm going to preach a little bit longer here tonight. I saw a preacher friend of mine. I say a preacher friend. We come up together in the ministry. He was a conservative man. Brother Tim Dean gave me one of the best compliments I've ever had. It wasn't Tim Dean. Brother Tim Dean told me last night, he said, Brother Shelton, I've known you since 06 or 07, and you've always been the same. You've never changed. Now today... Men look at that and say, oh, dear God. I said, thank you, Lord. I took that as a great compliment. Amen. I had a, a preacher I come up with. He was a conservative man. Man preached. I mean, he preached straight. He didn't cut no corners. Matter of fact, he was more, more conservative and more tight about some things than what we are. Man had a good church. I, you know, strong in the Lord. Had a good family. And I saw a picture recently, that same preacher, I hadn't seen him in a number of years. He's, he's off somewhere, he's still in, this, in western North Carolina, but at another church I, at a distance, and I hadn't seen him in a long time other than ministers' meetings or a, a camp meeting or a prayer conference. I've seen him there. Hadn't seen him in a long time. And, and to see him in those meetings, he looks the same, you know, uh, but just felt funny around him. I don't know how to, I just felt funny in my spirit around him. Uh, and, uh, you know, I saw a picture here recently, uh, and he was there in a pair of short britches. And I, I about fell out of my seat. I, 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 my tongue about fell out of my mouth and hit the floor. Uh, here's a man who was a conservative man. Uh, and here's the thing about it that just, just I didn't understand. Uh, he had short britches on, a preacher uh, had on a pair of short britches. Uh, hey, man, had a pair of 
socks pulled up. I so only had about that much of his leg showing. I, I thought, what in the world's the point of that? I, I don't understand why you didn't put that, that much of his leg showing. I, this is my point. I, hey man, preachers are called I, to a higher level of living. I, we're to set an example I, because what I let up in my life, I, it's going to show up worse on that pew. I, I said, what I'll compromise, I, it'll show up a whole lot worse on that pew. Somebody say amen. Put some clothes on, man of God. <laughs> I don't understand that. How can a conservative man that preached straight now suddenly say that's okay to do those things? I'm going to tell you something, friend. You do that, you do something else. I said, you let up in that, you do something else. Matter of fact, it's usually something in that heart that calls that already. Come on, nod your head and say amen. This is a, this is a day where we can't afford to let up. I've told you before, I ain't never laid down anything for God. I didn't lay down anything I laid down because a man told me to. I laid down because uh, when I got saved, uh, hey amen, I want to do everything that word told me. Uh, I want to obey God. Uh, I want to please God. Uh, hey amen, there's some things that I won't do uh, that's not sinful things, uh, but I won't do it uh, because I don't want to become a stumbling block to anybody else. Uh, hey amen, uh, I want to make sure that I live my life to please the Lord of glory who loves me that I preached about this morning that wonderful love of God that saved me out of the muck and mire and changed my life I want to live to please him and please him alone I've never laid down anything that I've ever wanted to go back and pick up again so evidently somebody's become careless Somebody's become at ease for those fleshly things, those desires to start stirring around in that heart again and to start desiring and lusting after things that you laid down for God all them years ago. Come on, say amen because I'm preaching so good tonight. Amen. Where are the convictions today? You don't hear people talk about convictions much anymore because our churches don't preach hardly against anything anymore. Most time when you leave churches, you go away saying, man, that was a great, that was, boy, we were entertained. That was just a wonderful, entertaining service. I'm going to tell you, friends, it's going to take more than entertainment to keep us in this fight. We've got to have the Word of God preached, the whole counsel of the Word of God. You've got to know what you believe and stand firm on it. Be leaders, don't be followers in the sense that just because somebody else goes that way, that I'm going to follow that way too. Amen. No, no. Stand firm in your convictions. Stand Stand firm on the word of God. Don't be tossed by every wind of doctrine to and fro. Amen. But be planted like that tree by the rivers of water. Be planted in the word of God. Be anchored in Jesus Christ. I don't care what happens in this time. You know what God saved you from. You know the Egypt God got you out of. So stay with him. Stay firm in him. And live your life for him. Somebody shout amen. Son of God's been wounded in the house of his friends. Brother Tim and I were talking this weekend. And he said, you see people get saved and they're just as worldly as they were before they got saved. He said, what did they get saved out of? What did they get saved from? Now, I've been called a dinosaur for preaching like this. Well, you just go ahead and mark me. Had a man tell somebody, oh, Brother Shelton's just a dinosaur. Well, I took that as a compliment too. I mean, I know I'm getting older and moving a little slower than I used to. Once that, <laughs> I was in that service last night over there in Denton, walked in the bathroom to, you know, before the service, and they had a mirror set, standing there. Right down, I walked in, and I said, How you doing, sir? I said, I done walked in on an old man in here and then realized it was me. Come on, you bunch of young folks. Anybody seen that old man in the mirror? I ain't talking about the old flesh. I'm talking about the old man from the age. You understand what I'm saying? Hey, man, I love, I love how I live. I don't live like I do to be saved. I live like I do because I am saved. 
I still believe in convictions. I do. I believe in the Word of God. I believe the Word of God will convict you. I believe if we'll start getting close to Him, Brother Tim and I have been talking about this this weekend, that when people begin to consecrate their lives to the Lord, God's going to start talking to you. When you start wanting to get close to God, God's going to start talking to you. The things that's not pleasing to him. And it's not all just sins, Brother Bill. Some of it's weights. Things that you can't afford to hold on to. Maybe they won't send you to hell, but they might lead you to do something else that would. I said maybe that particular thing won't lead you to hell, but it might lead you into other things that will. Can you say amen? So if we start getting close to God, if we start living consecrated before the Lord, I tell you God will deal with your heart. God will show you what he wants of us. God will show you what the Lord doth require of thee. I want to know how to please him. I want to know what he wants for my life. And I want to give it all. My God, I said I want to give it all to him. He's been too good to me. He's been too good to you. He saved my soul, changed my life, sanctified me, filled me with the Holy Ghost and fire. And I want to make it to heaven when I leave this world. Lift up holy hands and love him tonight. Ah, God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I'm not being ugly. I'm not being mean. I'm not picking on pastors. Because I don't I don't delight in that. My heart grieves over that. My heart breaks over that. My heart's burdened over that. To see a preacher or pastor begin to become careless. Nothing good comes from it. Nothing good comes from it. Now, the way my grandparents and your grandparents lived, your great-grandparents, now to hear it preached today, they were just old fools for how they lived. Let me tell you something about them old-timers. Oh, God. Let me tell you something about them old-timers. Mom and daddy can have a child to fall off a swing and be paralyzed. And rather than taking that baby to the hospital, they go to the preacher's house. And the preacher's son, the little boy, sees him coming down the driveway and tells his daddy, so-and-so members of the church are here. They pull up in the driveway and get out of the car quickly and say, boy, go get your daddy, go get the pastor. These old timers that separated themselves from everything that was worldly that they believed. Some of them may not have sent them to hell, but they didn't care. They wanted to get close to God. They wanted to be strong in the Lord. They wanted to be close. That's all that mattered was that consecrated life to God. Daddy, hurry. So-and-so's here. Daddy gets up from the breakfast table reading his Bible. Walks out on the front porch and they say, Pastor, Our baby fell off the swing. It's paralyzed. We brought him over here to the man of God's house. Bring that baby here. He said, I watched my daddy in them big old hands take that baby in his hands and raise him up and say in the name of Jesus, walk. Put him on the ground. The boy took off running. You see, they had power with God. They, they They didn't have all the technology we have today. They didn't have all the access to all the different uh, commentaries and Bibles uh, and all the biblical things that we have today. Uh, they had that old black book, that old black book Bible. Uh, they loved God. They lived on their knees. Uh, they were separated from the world. Uh, they were holy. Uh, they were mocked. They were laughed. Uh, amen. They were ridiculed. Uh, but when the people got sick, they called uh, on the church uh, to come and lay hands on them, uh, and they were healed. Uh, by the power of God. Hallelujah to God. 
raise your hands and love him. Hallelujah. When you saw them old timers, they stood out in a crowd. They were different people. They were pilgrims and strangers in this old world. They didn't do it to be seen of men, but they lived like that because they had such a heart for God. They were consecrated. In their walk with him. Oh, I remember going. We were talking this weekend. I remember going to the camp meetings. My, during the summertime, my mom and daddy and grandma and grandpa. And I was young, you know, maybe even and when I was a teenager. Even when Sister Amy and I got married, we, we went to the camp meeting over there in Charlotte. I, I remember, I, you know, I was young. I didn't really know anything about all this. I, I've seen it in, in, in our church and people get blessed and but I knew there's something in that building bigger than us. And God would move through that place. People would be healed and saved and sanctified and baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. And they'd leave there with victory. They didn't care about the things of this world. They had everything they had that they wanted in Him. And I watched that thing change. And I watched that world come in there. And I watched that thing. I watched leadership let that come in. And I, I watched as it came in. I watched the Spirit go out the door. And I watched where now they had to entertain the crowds, the masses. And I watched where you had to have clowns and mimes up on the platform uh, trying to do and stir up something. Uh, where you used to just the Spirit of God would move uh, among people that were consecrated uh, and holy and separated and sanctified uh, from this old world. Uh, a lot of them were not educated, uh, but they loved God with all their heart uh, and they trusted God. Uh, and God would move and miracles uh, would take place in their midst. Told, I told Brother Tim last night, I said, why can't they see that? Why can't they see that? I guess if I had never known this, maybe, maybe the temptation might be to just to settle on down and flow on down the stream what's going on. But most of us have known the power and the presence of God. I've seen the Shekinah cloud come in. Oh, God. I've seen people slain in the Spirit of God. I've seen people healed by the power of God. I've watched sinners come to the altars and, and, and lay things on that altar and say, I'm, I'm not doing, I'm done with this. Conviction in the church. The God moving. The danger is, Becoming at ease and becoming careless. Sister Shelton and I were coming home. Sister, come on, get ready to play, please. I, I've got to stop here. I've got, I've got more, but I need to, we need to come in these altars and pray tonight. Sister Shelton and I were coming home on Friday night from the revi revival over there in Denton. And uh, we saw a possum. I don't know how I made something spiritual out of this, but I did. I don't know how you use a possum to make something spiritual, a spiritual application, but I did. Saw a possum coming from the field there. And just kind of, you know, back and forth there at the road. And I just laid down on my horn. And that horn was an alarm to warn him, don't come this way because it's dangerous. Go back the other way where it's safe. I laid on that horn because I didn't want to hit him. I, you, know, I'm, I, you know, I say bugs sometimes. What is wrong with me? Got too big a heart, too tender a heart. My mama raised me like that. 
My daddy's tenderhearted too. They, you know, they'll save bugs and they, you know. But I sounded that alarm on that horn to warn him. This is dangerous the way you're going. If you keep going this way, you're going to get hit and you're going to die. And I laid that horn down and that rascal didn't go the other way. He come right out in front of me. And we hit him. Bothered me. I don't like to kill anything. And I thought, preachers better start sounding that alarm again from the pulpits. There needs to be a roar of a lion. The Bible said the lion needs to roar from the pulpit again. We need to sound the trumpets, the alarms, that if you keep going the way you're going, there's danger ahead. It's not going to end well for you. I tried to warn that little possum, don't come this way, pal. And he did. Coming home last night from over that service, me and Brother Tim were riding together, and there he was on the side of the road. He was expired. He died. If I'm sorry, Ma, I didn't mean you have to hear that. But it bothered me too. Seen him laying there. I said, I said, Brother Tim, his mom and dad's gonna be looking for us. So we need to pray for his family because they're grieving the loss of their son right now. I thought, I thought to myself, if he had listened to that alarm, that warning from that horn and gone the other way, he'd still be foraging, doing something right now. How many people? There's an alarm sounding. It may not be sounding in the churches like it used to, and it's not. And God will hold preachers accountable for that. That Listen, that pew will die and go to hell if they're lost. But God's going to hold preachers and pastors accountable for what we said and what we didn't say. He's going to hold us accountable. There's alarm go, alarms going off all around this world right now. It's right here in Ashburn. Alarms are going off trying to wake us up. We need to see the signs of the times of where we're living. I can't afford, as Samson, to lay my head in the lap of Delilah. I can't afford to play around with my consecration. I can't afford to lose what God has deposited in my life. But I've got to guard this pearl of great pro oh God. I've got to guard this pearl of great price through praying and fasting and seeking God and staying close to Him. And if I do that, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to fight to get there. I'm going to be in a warfare. But if I fight the good fight of faith, I'm going to lay hold on eternal life. And we're going to make it to heaven, child of God. We can't become at ease. I, I, you know, there's, there's a warning. Don't become careless. I, don't neglect so great of salvation. I, but guard it through prayer and fasting. I, amen. Make sure I, that you have a vigil around the clock I, watching over your soul. Make sure I, that you're protecting what God has given you you. Amen. What would it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? What would that man give an exchange for his soul? If you're going to go with God, don't just put your foot in the water. Don't just put your knee in the water. Don't just get out to your hips, but get all the way in that river until you're under the control of that river. You're not the one in control anymore. It is the Spirit of God and serve the Lord. I don't care who compromises. I don't care who turns back. Amen. You can't afford. I can't afford to do it. I've got to go onward and upward with the Lord of glory. I've got to continue in this holiness way. Hallelujah to God. God is here. <laughs> and it'll get us there. But God is here, Sister Audrey. And it's going to get us there. Everybody stand, please. You pray for that pastor. Because I'm telling you, the next thing's going to happen, he'll have his shirt off at the beach. Whew. That runs through me to see a pastor half naked. Preacher, you're bidding, you know what? That runs through me. You ain't never going to convince me that's right. You ain't never going to convince me that's okay today. 
Because I'm telling you what that pastor and what that pastor's wife does. What they compromise with. It'll show up worse in the members of that church. You rest assured. If that pastor's wife starts decking up a little bit like the world, those members in that church, they'll deck it up a whole lot like that world. We're the example. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. You better make sure you follow the right pastor. He said, you better make sure you follow the right pastor. We're not different. We're not better than anybody else. But God saved us out of that old life of worldliness and sinfulness. He calls us to dress modestly. It never stops once you let it start. It never stops once you let it start. I don't want to become at ease. I want to be careful. We're not hard. I'm not hard. I'm not mean-spirited. But I know what I believe and why I believe it. And I do know this. If I had compromised years ago, I probably wouldn't be here tonight. I'm so glad, I'm so glad I had good examples in my life that taught me the right way, caused me to love the Lord, showed me, showed me how it was to live for God. And I want to be that example. You listen to me here. There's a war for our kids. Now we see how far the church has come in our generation. We've come a long way the wrong way. If the Lord tarries this coming and we all go by that grave and the next generation comes up and leaves the church, the way this generation has led the church so far away, the next generation is going to lead it farther away. And if time stands another generation, they'll lead it even farther away. So you and I have to make sure that I know what I believe and why I believe it and live it. Don't try to see what you can hold on to. Get close to God and just live your life loving Him and He'll show you exactly how to live and what it requires of your life. Can you give Him a hand of praise tonight all over this house? <laughs> how many here are saved? Raise your hand if you're saved in this house. I believe that's everybody in here tonight. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. You're rich. <laughs> you're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed if you're saved. I want us to come around these altars and let's stand. Come standing, please. If you're able to. <laughs> Sister, I want you to just play softly, please. You're doing a great job. I appreciate Sister Albright. She had some surgery on Friday, Thursday, Friday, Friday. Brother Albright didn't do that to her because if he did, I'd be having his funeral sermon today. I'd be preaching this home going. I don't know if it would be a home going or not. She had some surgery done on her head, her face. She didn't get a facelift. You can look and tell by that it ain't been lifted, right? She's puffy. It's hanging down over her face. She is in church on Friday night playing the piano over at that church. Didn't have no question whether she's going to be in church this morning. She's here. I'm sure she's in pain. I'm sure she's hurting. She's been playing that piano all day long, singing for the glory of God. Told me this morning her eyes blurry. She can't hardly see. She played. And God helps her and touches her and anoints her. Oh, they don't get any better than Sister Albright. She's a good lady. Loves God. I don't know what happened to that grumpy old fellow over there. <laughs> He's a good man too. She's made him better. How many here tonight say, Brother Sean, I want to go to heaven? If we make it to heaven, none of those th none of these things gonna matter. Everything you've attained in this life won't matter. Every dollar bill you put in the bank won't matter. Everything you've accumulated won't matter. 
The things you've had to go through won't matter. The sickness you've had to face won't matter over there because it's not going with you. These are dangerous times. The Apostle Paul, let me share this. Hold on one second, Sister Albright. Let me just let me just read this to you, please. Hold on one second, please. Sister Albright, hold on one second, please. She might have surgery on her ear. I want to share this with you very quickly. The Apostle Paul wrote this to Timothy over, over 1,900 years ago. And if this is not a description of much of this Latter-day Church, I don't know what is. The carelessness of this hour in a time of crisis. He said in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. You say that sure is the truth out there in that world. Boy, you see it everywhere, but that's not who he was talking about. He was describing what some of the church would be in this latter day because he said they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. From such, turn away. I want to know what the Amplified said about it, so I looked it up this evening. And the Amplified says, but understand this, that in the last days, dangerous times of great stress and trouble will come, difficult days that will be hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self, narcissistic, self-focused, lovers of money impelled by greed, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. And they will be unloving, devoid of natural human affection, calloused and humane, irre irreconcilable, malicious gossips, devoid of self-control, intemperate, immoral, brutal, haters of good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of sensual pleasures rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of outward godliness, religion, although they have denied its power, for their conduct nullifies their claim of faith. He said, avoid such people and keep far away from them. Paul's not describing, the apostle Paul's not describing the barroom crowd. He's not describing Walmart. He's describing the condition of this latter-day church or what you're going to find in the church, these kind of people right inside the church who go through the motions of religion, but they have nullified their, their faith in God and their testimony because of the way they live their lives. He said there are perilous times, there's dangerous times. So you and I have to listen to the alarms and make sure we know what the Word of God says. And make sure that I live each and every day by that blessed book. If you get out of line, get right back in line. If you stumble, get steady again. Hold on to his hand. If you fall, don't lay there. Great God, get back up. Uh, knock the dust off and keep on going forward in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sister Albright, play softly. Won't you, if you will, lay your hand on somebody beside you. I want you to pray for your brothers and sisters tonight. I love old brother Junior Bell. I've known him a long time. He's a friend. As long as I've known him, he's always been the same. He's a good man, loves God. Let's pray that God will strengthen us tonight, that God will give us a touch in heaven, from heaven. Make sure that we're alert, that we're sober and vigilant, and that it's home, we're Christian soldier, that we're going to keep on pressing. 
Father, touch this congregation tonight. These are wonderful saints of God, Lord. Everybody in this house, raise their hands that they're a Christian. I believe they are, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for where you brought us from, the change that you made in us. We would have never made this change ourselves, but you've made a change in us. We're not what we used to be. We've been saved out of darkness. Now we've been brought into your marvelous light. It is a marvelous light. I pray, God, we'll hold fast. Oh, we'll not let any man take our crown. I pray for those who've compromised. I pray for pulpits where preachers have lowered the standards. Men can do that, but your word never changes. Those boundaries in your word are not there to harm us or to confine us or to restrict us. They're there to protect us. You know what's best for us when we don't, God. I pray for every heart in this house, Lord, that we'll have a greater desire from this day forward than we've ever had. That we'll be consecrated, Lord. We'll be sensitive to what we do, how we live, where we go, what these eyes see, what these ears hear, where these feet travel, what these hands partake of. 